Hey guys, so today I'm going to be upgrading for my ancient mid-2012 MacBook Pro to a new 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. So without any further ado, let's get into it. This is my new M1 MacBook Pro. Look at that. The delivery guy, he didn't even check to see if anybody was home. He just dropped it off in front of the house on the left. So lucky I was home, but I guess where else would I be? Hmm, wasn't that nice? So cold, I'm sitting in the back of a truck. Just stick this on and try again. There we go. And here comes my dog, just walking in. Hey, you're in the way. And the other side. Look at this. So, insert unboxing for cable. There, just a USB C to Lightning cable. And the cable actually came about two weeks before the computer, I think. It's currently February 1st. I actually ordered the computer on December 31st. It took a long time to get produced because I custom ordered this. So I'll show you the specs after I get it unboxed. And hope I can smell the apple box scent. No, I'm just, I don't smell anything really too much. Look at this. Set it off to the side like a typical unboxing. We got the cable. It's actually longer than I expected. And then our power brick. Ooh, they switched to silver apple stickers. Isn't that nice? Never seen any like this. I just have white ones. That's pretty cool. Stick it right on the computer. <laughs> Everything can just go over there for now. Now the main attraction. And I got the silver because, I don't know, space gray is just kind of chips up and the silver just looks like a, I don't know, classic Mac to me. Oh, listen to that startup sound. They changed it. It sounds kind of like closer to the old Mac startup sounds like my iMac G3 kind of sounds like that. bars coming on. Look at this. Oh, that force touch trackpad. Well, that's nice. Well, it's so big. Like, look at that. And you can't just type out your country. The new keyboard, I've actually, I might have felt they're new. Scissor switch keyboard, but I'm not sure. So now that we've finished the unboxing, let's switch out the computers. Remove this old thing and replace it with the new one. Now we'll reconfigure everything. Wait, this is USB. How's that gonna work? So I've run into a problem. My USB hub down here, you can't see it is USB-A. Computer is USB-C. So I guess we'll just continue hooking up stuff. Already happen to have a USB-C cable run. Headphone jack. Move to the other side. Isn't that convenient? Now, we'll get a little help from Samsung. It's one of those things for transferring your phones. Not mine, but parents. Well, but they don't use it because I use Apple. They don't. So plug this in and then it works fine. And it's better than having one of those big dongles in my opinion because I don't need all those other ports because really most transferring I do is over Bluetooth with AirDrop. And then for stuff like this, 
I have this, so I'll need to 3D print a new case for this at some point because I just stuck it inside of a broken one. So here it is, Big Sur. It's pretty cool. So now I'll show you the specs, but I'll switch to a screen recording for that because this just isn't very elegant. So now we are, oh, the touch bar is actually telling me how much, how big the video is and it's really jumping quick in size. It's already 54 megabytes. So I'll do this quick. So we'll go to the about this Mac. You can see it's running Big Sur version 11.1. Actually, update 11.2 is out, but I didn't want to update yet. So yeah, it's got the M1 chip, has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the storage. I got the one terabyte option. I've already used 100 gigabytes, which, and you can see over here, I'm connected to all my servers. You can run iOS apps, I guess. Downloaded San Andreas on here, so I enjoyed playing that on my phone, but still wasn't, not as good as the PS2 version. That's my favorite version. So this is not easy to play. So yeah, you have to use... Can I just turn the radio off? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like a touch screen, so it doesn't work right. Yeah, it's not easy to play, but other iOS apps work a lot better. Oh wow, we're already at a gigabyte. So, stop that. So this computer has Touch ID and it's really fast and works. I've never had good luck with Touch ID. I always have to reprogram it because my fingers usually peel and it just never works well. But it works on this computer. So we we'll also need to do a quick keyboard test. The keyboard is nice and clicky and has good travel. So I think it's pretty nice to type on. A lot better than the previous keyboard of my mid-2012 MacBook Pro. So the touch bar on this computer is kind of cool for watching videos. You can scoot around throughout them. Adjust your volume. I don't feel the same way about the touch bar as Brian Tong does. I'm just, I kind of don't really care about it. It's not like it's a big thing, but I don't hate it. That's for sure. It's yeah. It's just I don't really care too much whether it was there or not. Editing's really nice on this computer. I've edited the whole video on here in iMovie. You can see you got some controls in the touch bar. You fast forward. You can split something right there by touch it, but I don't want to do that. So yeah, it's a really nice upgrade over my old computer. And Big Sur is a bit to get used to coming from Mojave. I like the old skeuomorphic design better, but I guess you can say some of that kind of came back. Like the hard drive icon looks similar to the older ones. Like when you go back to Mountain Lion and those operating systems, it looks similar. And then you have like completely new ones like the shared folders. So yeah, I think it's it. It's a really nice computer and I'm happy I got it. So hopefully it'll make my content better and come out faster. So here's the two computers side by side. And I have one problem with this new one. It's not the lack of upgradability or ports or anything like that. It's the lack of the glowing Apple logo. That's the one thing that matters. Because then, I don't know, people know you have a Mac in the dark. I don't know, it just looks cool. And the glowing keyboard's still there. But without this computer though, I wouldn't even have a YouTube channel. Because that's well, one of the reasons I started it, I guess. I don't know but I wouldn't have had anything to edit videos on, probably I wouldn't have gotten this. 
I've had it for about two years. Yeah, so I got it at the start of 2019. But when I sell this computer, I should actually be able to make money off of it. Because I paid $400 Canadian for it and it's gotten upgraded. I took out the DVD drive and put in a 250 gigabyte SSD. And I'll probably sell it with Word, Photoshop and stuff on it. I guess I'll make a video about selling this computer when I'm ready to do that. I've got everything working correctly on my new one. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed. There'll be plenty more videos coming out with this computer. So see you next time.